This is Tea Time, where we dissect and analyze what's big and popping in the world of entertainment. And if not, it ain't coming out of the slips. I'm definitely not alone. I've got my intelligent co-anchors, Ife Omai, and introducing our guest anchor, Adi Wale. How yeah. are you doing? Hi. I'm good. I'm you good. Good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Let's see you. Yes. I'm so excited to be Do on the Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should say my name is Wale. W A L A Y. Wale. Mm. Yeah. It's not W H A L E. Yeah, no, no, no. no, I had to spell it for them. You know? How about W H A L E Y? Wale. 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 Yeah. All right, so tell us about yourself. What have you been doing? Uh, and yeah. um, introduce yourself to okay, us. Okay, um, Wale is a presenter, mm. a producer. Mm. I create, I create um, content as well, mm. uh, a journalist, mm. and uh, <laughs> I also direct. Mm. Yeah. So. What else do you do aside from you know this media industry? What else is your strength? Uh, I I I listen to music a lot. What type of music do you listen to? Any kinds of music. What's school, your favorite album at the moment? Album. Uh, still, uh, Pop Smoke. Pop mm. Smoke. What album? What's what album is that? And uh, the album 50 Cent produced for Yeah, him. I know. What's the title? Uh, I, I won't lie to you. I'm not really... Oh, wow. Um, and you love but, that but album. But I love that album because I okay. listened to it. Great. Yeah. Great. So, All right. So um, what's your greatest single, Nigerian single of the moment? A single right now. I think I like um, Lighter. Lighter? Yeah. What song? The one he featured with um, Naira What's Mani. the title of the song? Sure. Are yeah, you sure? sure? Yeah. All right. Great. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you yeah, sure? Yeah. Are you sure? I just saw the video it's yesterday. Sure? And, uh, are you sure? You yes. saw it yesterday? I saw the video yesterday. Right. Are you sure yeah. it's sure? I'm sure that it's, it's sure. sure. The title had to do with sure. Are you sure? Ah, it's oh sure. Oh, God. But I know it's sure. Are you sure? Are you sure? Huh? Are you sure? That's Am I sure? Are you asking me a question? No. Am I sure? The song. The song. It's what? Don't, don't twist me. The song has to do with sure. Mm. Yes, of course. Yeah, so that's just what I like about it. Are you sure it is sure? I'm sure. You are sure that it is sure? <laughs> yeah. Everything is okay with you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, he, that's anyway, it. Like, anyways, I, I like, I love um, the song. So, um, okay, so let's talk about your entertainment background. How vast are you in entertainment, you know? Mm, I'm still trying. I won't, I won't say I'm... Um, I'll just say I'm... So what's your forte? Do you think you're the entertainment guy? Do you think you're the political guy or yes? Entertainment. Entertainment? If I'm not entertainment. So who's your biggest... Who's the biggest entertainer in Nigeria at the moment as far as you, uh, in your know, opinion? We all know it's Mr. Bronner now. <laughs> Mr. Bronner. Oh, right. Why? Because he won the Grammy. And of course, because that's what is actually everywhere. Bronner is... that is what makes you the biggest artist in the, in the continent? In the because continent. you won the Grammy. Well, well... As for me, I can't think of anybody right now in Nigeria. You don't think Davido is big enough? You don't think Davido has been putting uh, us on Davido the map is good. for a long Everybody time? Everybody is good, but, you know, Bona Boy, we know. At least I can't is that your favorite Nigerian artist? No, he's not my favorite Nigerian artist. Who's your favorite me? Nigerian artist? I, can't, I don't really have a favorite Nigerian artist. Okay, so if you have to pick three artists from Nigeria, who are they? Uh, definitely, I'll go for Bona. Mm. Um, I'll go for Two-Face. Mm. Mm. And then, um, once again... I'll go for to be. I think I'll go for Naira Mali. Nice. Naira Mali. So you like Naira Mali? I like What's Naira your Mali. biggest Naira Mali song? Wait, now I'm getting to know my guy. Now come on, did I get to know you? What's your biggest Naira Mali song? Ah, uh, Kule Yewa. So you sing like a few lines of Kule Yewa. Kule Yewa. Kule Yewa. Kule Yewa. Kule Yewa. I just like I just like the rhythm of that song, you know. I'm on the double fish. Oh no! At the double fish. You know, I you know, you know, know. People like one thing I noticed about <laughs> Nairamali is that they do, he he sings from whatever is going on mm. around. It's, mm. it's not all about I have to be careful because mm. you know that's why he said his song is not for. I think there was time he said he said his song is not for kids. Mm. Yeah. Because he's deep. Mm. He's What's your biggest embarrassing moment? Oh. Uh, when I when I was um, probably shooting, and then um, I discovered that after the shoot, there was no audio, mm. and then I had to. Can you speak up a bit, please? I had to find a way yeah. how to you know communicate with the guest again. That mm. man, it's like 
you will have to come around again. It was very embarrassing to me mm. because it made me look as if when I wasn't profession, I wasn't a professional in what I was doing. That how were we going to be shooting? And um, at the end of the day, though it was a technical, a technical thing, but I just felt embarrassed, you know. Alrighty, welcome to the squad. Mm. So we all have something in common now. At least we have Nayamali in common. Mm -hmm. We have um, what's it called now? Mm. You know, embarrassing moments mm. in common. So yes, welcome to the squad. Welcome Adi Wale. Mm. And yes, Adi Wale will be joining us this morning to discuss some of the biggest entertainment stories. And we have something special for you guys. Now we'll be introducing a new segment on the show that you guys never seen before. Segment, but yes, it's called the Half Hour Hot Topic. So you need to stick around to actually see what's going on with that but moving on the first story of the day is a nollywood actor yul edoche was disagreed with his father pete edoche's stance on gifting in-laws the patriarch of the edoche family in a recent interview said any father who wants to gift his married daughter a car and gives it in a name is destroying the daughter's marriage he advised the father to buy the car in his son in-law's name you disagreed with his father's opinion. He wrote, of course, Chief is entitled to his opinion. And back then, their ways were different. For me, if I buy a car for my daughter as a wedding gift, I'll give it to her to register it in whatever name she likes. If she asks me to do the registration for her, then I'll register it in our name. Do you guys agree or disagree? The heck? Oh. Okay. Like, this type of story just give you a headache. Um, like, um, first of all, um, I saw that story yesterday, and yeah. it was like... This man again. The truth of the matter is that uh, this is like his second, the second time Peter Duce is actually coming through when mm. it comes to this issue of um, marriage. Mm. You know, the, the last one where he was talking about he would, uh, why would a man mm. go on his knees to mm. propose? Mm -hmm. That was the first this one. Actually, no, that's the, the, yeah, that was the yeah. first one. Yes, yeah, that yeah. was the first one. He came with that and you know, and now he's coming again with this. Did you see the one that happened on, I think, on Monday? That broke over the weekend, and then on Monday, we were, it was all over the place. You didn't see anything the on The one Peter about the, the condoms. Chair. About the condoms. Me, okay, saying that... Um, Women should put condoms. Put condoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was part of the, it's the, the same story. Video. It's the mm -hmm. same video, yeah. yes. So, uh, to me, I just feel the man is just being... He's been an old school. Mm. Mm. And, you know, sorry, I'm not trying to be tribalistic here, but, you know, you see, this, you see when it comes to Igbo, Mm. You know, they are very, very careful and they are very, very particularly about their, their men, mm. their tribe. Mm. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to a, ma a man, a man heading the family, they don't joke with it. Mm. They don't joke with it, especially they always want that respect. Right. You but know? let's talk about the new generation as well. Do you think that regardless of whether you're Igbo or Hausa or Yoruba, you know, we should still be all about patriarchal stuff that because you are a man, you have to be the head, you have to be this. Don't you think that at this point in our lives, haven't you had women that you have to share things equally with, especially when it comes to power? Well, this, this, our, generation, this our generation is quite crazy. Mm. It's a very crazy generation. And things have changed. Uh, I feel... All things are passed away. And all things are become new. new, Pastor. But we still have some of our, our daddies that still believe that their own time is still, you know, mm. the best right now and all that. But I believe it's just Peter Jesus' uh, opinion. Yeah, and like let's keep it at that. This is mm. not set in stone. It's mm. not a law. But what do you think? I mean, it's, really, it's very ridiculous. This whole thing is very ridiculous. And I'm sorry, but it's beginning to make me even now despise the idea of his son actually being in politics. Um, at first, I, I thought, you know, because if we, if, we, if we respect his father in any way and maybe his father has influence over his life, then I worry for the kind of Nigeria he's planning on building. But you just disagree with his old father. Yeah, but not really. He still said, well, whatever name she wants to put it in. And I don't know, maybe he's disagreeing with this one, but then are you agreeing, we agree with a lot of other things. I don't know. It just feels like he's the kind of person that I'm like, actively um, fighting against, especially for my country. So I'm on the opposite spectrum of who Peter Doce is and everything that he stands mm. for, right? So I feel like there's, a, there's, a, there's a, uh, an intellectual war going on with these kinds of people and my kind of people, right. right? So if his father is, if he's anything like his father, then it worries me that he even come into politics. Like, I mean, right now, he's just on social media with the camera. It's not harmful. 
But imagine this kind of person ruling. You surely start to see like policies mm. that you know are yeah. trifling women and mm. really boxing women because you can't even imagine women having owning properties. Like you're taking us back. <laughs> mm. You're taking us back. You're trying to <clears throat> really eradicate all the progress that we've made. So that's really scary for me. Mm. Um, and I, so I wish he condemned this a bit more than just, oh, yeah, whatever my daughter wants, I will put it. So if my daughter says, nah, I, I need the kind of person then that if her daughter, if your daughter said, um, oh, please put it in my husband's name, you'll be the one to ask her that. Are you, are you okay? sure about that? Like, are you okay? Yeah. Uh, why don't you want to own your own properties? Um, so that, that for me is crazy. I mean, I, I remember when we were <clears> talking <throat> about the whole condoms thing. I said it when he was like, if the guy says he wants to marry somebody else, what will you do? What will you do? This man clearly wants women to be unempowered seriously that's seriously yeah. unempowered that's right. because owning properties gives you empowerment um, um having a house gives you empowerment being able to defend yourself gives you you have to be empowered to be able to do that and he sees no reason why a woman should be empowered and that yeah. is a big turn off for me and you know what it can never happen what can what never, never happen for for a woman, I mean, for a man to want to take over the ocean, this is our generation. It's it can never. It's too late, it sir. It's too late. All right, but, but, but for me, I think I, I agree 100% with you, Ladoche, because I think he actually bashed his father's opinion I, so, by saying that, look, I, well, that's his opinion. His time has changed. Yeah. Now, obviously, I would do the same if I'm to buy a car for my daughter on a wedding day. I'll give her a car that is not registered. Uh -huh, no. Who's arguing about that? Effect? Yes, no, but when we're now saying it like um, he's, he's kind of like in support of his father. I don't. That's see not the registered it. points. If you if you, if let me let me tell you what I'm arguing. You buy a car for your daughter mm. on her wedding day. Are you going to ask her? No, I'm not going what to. What option of name she should put on her no, thing? No, it's not even a question that should come up. Exactly. That's what no, I'm, I'm going to give her. No, that's why I said you let do change. So you don't agree hundred percent then, because he said he will ask his daughter the options. Of what name she wants to put it in, and if she says it's her name, then he'll go ahead and do that. Do you want to bring up the the, the, the okay, thing again? Okay, okay, that was the second part when he said, okay, she asked me to yes. register, I'll ask her what name. And Why now, are you it could be for name? it could be for oh, put it in my company name. It doesn't yeah. really have to if be I the husband. Don't change the conversation. No, I want to see. I try to see the bigger picture. The, no, don't 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 speak for people who have not who have not asked you to. The conversation was about his dad. They never asked me to talk about <laughs> them in but I talk about them. Yeah. <laughs> his dad said. His dad said he would put. It that anyone who buys for his daughter and puts it in her name is trying to re destroy the marriage or whatever to so put it in the husband's name so that's, he's not replying and saying that oh i don't agree to that all i would do is, the only difference is that not that i wouldn't put it in the man's name so i'll ask first well that's so chief's opinion so i feel uh, you know chief is actually being careful too as a mm. man you know putting the name of the man in whatever you know and maybe he sees it that anything can happen alongside the Like what? What's your biggest like, fear for women owning like, cars? I'd like to uh, know. Uh, maybe at the end of the day, the woman, I can't hear the, woman, the, woman, the woman can decide to say maybe she's no longer interested in the marriage. Oh, uh, and, and that's a problem if she has a car? So, because she will use a car to drive out of your house. So, you're uh, ah! so, you know, the man can just, you know, okay, even if she says she wants to go. Everything still belongs to me. Oh, okay, so what's your wow. take on men? Now, there was a video where I went viral, you know, during the Valentine period of a guy who actually went to a restaurant, saw his girlfriend sitting with another man, took his bone straight hair, took her shoes and all of that. What's your opinion about men who do that such things? First of all, that was childish mm. to me. I won't do that. Mm. Though, that's to show, it just shows the kind of person that guy is. Mm. Because if he really, really loves her, from his depth of his heart, or really loves this woman. Ah, okay. I mean, it's, to me, it's just, it's even irritating. Yeah. That don't, shows that the So don't man, you think that when the good gets going and you give the woman anything or she has anything under your name, you shouldn't be worried about when she's leaving and she has to go with those things? I'm sorry, what? When the good is get, mm -hmm. gets going, okay. right? And a woman gets whatever it is from you. Do you think when it becomes bad, you're entitled to those things back? No. Because that's exactly... What kind of giving no, are you no, no, no. giving What kind then? of giving? It's not... It's... Are I'm you giving that, or are you doing a contract? Which one? No, you guys are not getting it now. Now, I'm asking this question from the point of, oh, when it gets bad and she wants to leave and she mm -hmm. has to go with the car. And I'm asking that. But in that car, you gave her in good faith because everything was going smoothly. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So when it's not going smoothly mm -hmm. and she needs to walk away, why should we be worried about what she walks with? 
He's still yeah, not but getting no, it. He doesn't have a pro- I don't have a problem with he's that. Just, he, I think he was just trying to explain mm. the idea. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I, don't, I don't think... Are you supporting? Are I'm you not supporting. Okay. Why would you collect it back? <laughs> what is... Hey, so why shouldn't we leave it in the woman's name? That's my own question. Are you guys not getting it? Mm. That whatever gift you are giving to your daughter on her wedding day, the, the thought of whatever happens between her and her husband years down the line, or even months or weeks down the line, is actually none of my business. Yeah. I'm actually giving it to my daughter okay. in her name. Again, this is a str- This is the reason why I cannot say, oh, we don't need feminism in this country. <laughs> Ah, because there's work to be done. There is a lot yeah. of work to be done. Um, if there are men still roaming around that think like gifts. this, it is very alarming no, for the state, no, for no. the protection of women and their futures. If there are women who have also accepted this as their faith, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of women that don't know any different, right? They don't have any spirit of empowerment, so they've agreed that you know I'm only what my only what the man tells me I am. Mm. No, it can't there's a work. lot of work. There work. is a it lot of work, work that needs this, to be this, done. This is our time. It can't work. And but do you know, sorry, do you know that also women do that too? Mm. They buy you things and all that, and when you say you're no longer interested, they some of them ask for what they get. So those are two different conversations, right? The mm. idea of gifting someone mm. your lover. Um, I don't think that, that's a gender conversation. I think it's a personality mm-hmm. thing. If you're petty, you might want your gifts back. If you're not, nobody cares. And you, we end, we end, you move on with all the stuff that you've, I've, you've benefited from me and I do the same. But now we're talking about the, the conversation of even allowing ownership for women. Mm-hmm. Because that's, that's what he's, mm-hmm. he's, he's talking mm-hmm. about. And you see, that's much deeper than feelings and all of that. That's like, that's like um, entering economics now, mm-hmm. right? Because that's the only way you um, elevate yourself from poverty. Already, already. So, yeah, Alrighty. different conversation. Alrighty, so we need to move on to the next story. Like sure. I told you guys, yes, we'll be having a, a brand new segment on the show. So um, the next story is an American singer, Demi Lovato, who has revealed that she was sexually assaulted by a drug dealer on the night she overdosed. She will be recalled that three years ago, of course. Demi Lovato, um, you know, overdosed on drugs and the whole world was worried about her and all of that. And um, in the docu series on YouTube, um, yes, um, she, told, she told us about the drug dealer would deliver the, a dangerous cocktail. So Dancing with the Devil is the name of the series. And yes, who delivered a dangerous cocktail of heroin and other drugs on the night she overdosed three years ago. When she woke up in the hospital after the incident, the doctor asked her if she had consensual sex. She said, I remember being lying on top of me, so I said yes. It wasn't until maybe a month after my overdose that I realized, hey, you weren't in any state of mind to make it a consensual decision decision that kind of trauma doesn't go away overnight yeah. what's your take on this one um that definitely happens uh and which is why the conversation around consent needs to be had mm. a lot more um it's not as simple as she said yes he said no mm. and some people um exactly. some people I mean, I'm, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here some people don't, don't genuinely understand that fully well right so some people would say, I heard yes, and so it's okay. And I'm not saying that that's an evil thing, but it's wrong. And I think with time, we need to educate people more. That it's not as simple as saying yes. You have to make sure that this person is of the sound mind. The person is, for example, the person is an adult. A young child can say yes, mm. but you can't sleep with a young child because she doesn't have the audacity or the, or the you know, she she's not capable of giving a full yes because she's underage. Yeah. You know, so there has to be a lot more conversations around consent and how deep it is. And I think this one, this particular one, is very common where you see in Nigeria. I remember Christmas, I, I kept tweeting and saying, please, guys, let's have more conversations around consent this, this um, December period because there's, there's going to be house parties. Mm. And that's why you find a lot of rape cases coming out of in Nigeria, especially on Twitter space, is that, you know, she can say yes, but is she intoxicated? Is she drunk? If she is, I don't think you should be having sex with somebody who isn't yeah. in their I'm sound not, mind. Not right yes, because yeah. you can say a lot of things. If you ask me when I'm drunk, if I want to jump... Um, naked on, around on Todd Milan Bridge. I probably would say yes, but that doesn't mean that I'm saying that with like my full consciousness. So the same applies to um, applies to um, uh, what's drugs. it called drugs as well. Yeah. So with this guy now, I don't know because he sells drugs. I have a bias already to his comfort, to him. I'm sorry. I so maybe I, even sold the wrong drugs. So exactly. So I know that I, I like to. I, I'm <clears throat> tinting to leaning towards the idea that he knew this woman was intoxicated and deliberately did what he did yes yes absolutely because there are some men that don't know that you're drunk 
There are some men that don't know that you're intoxicated. You I've seen that before. You drunk all the time for them not to know you. No, drunk. like I have a friend where she, I don't know what drug she was on, she was in Australia. And she went to a house party. Now she was a bit like, wooey, like jumpy, jumpy, but nothing too, like it wasn't like she was throwing up or anything like that. And we were trying to figure out the whole time if she had had sex with the person that she was hanging around with, right? Mm. So that kind of person now, the man doesn't know that she wasn't of sound mind. Mm. Or maybe sometimes you yourself, you are too much of out of your own mind mm. that you don't know. Like it's very complicated, mm. but um, it's definitely rape. I've seen people argue on Twitter about this conversation, whether or mm. not if she was raped. Uh, that's not rape now. It actually is. It is rape. If I didn't give you my consent willingly, mm. then um, if even if you force me, if I'm sober and you force me and I'm like, no, let's do it, let's do it. And I say, oh, like, you know, you're not really giving me a choice. It's still not consensual um, sex mm. as well. So the conversation gets, gets deep. Okay. okay. Um, for me, what I feel, first of all, it's, it's a very, very, it's a sad, it's a sad one mm. for her. Um, but secondly, this drug dealer or drug thing, is it, is it really, is it really a must, one must have a drug dealer? It's really a must because I believe, I believe um, one thing about this stage is that we know that, look, for example, look at uh, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, at, at the end of the day, uh, what, we, uh, what we heard or what we learned was that mm -hmm. uh, it was the doctor or whoever was properly treating him mm. or giving was probably the one that gave him the overdose thing. Mm. So, but I, I, be, I believe when we have a doctor and you have your own doctor, why would you need a drug dealer again? I don't get that. Like somebody who is probably giving you your medication to use because oh. I guess that's the person. Oh, that wait, what, what type of drugs do you think we're talking about here? Paracetamol? <laughs> no. I am. <laughs> 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 No, no. Um, okay, no. so Demi Lovato, um, her documentary is actually about her life. She's she's. They a, even mentioned it, heroin. She's a Your child doctor star. would not give you heroin. She's a child star. She's had a very hard time growing up. Like in front of us, she's had like a lot of um, overdoses where we've almost lost her and stuff. So this documentary is supposed to give a, an insight on her struggles okay. and like a very raw, honest truth about her life. So she's actually a drug. She was a drug addict. She was somebody that had serious drug issues, and I'm not talking painkiller. <laughs> for a headache i mean like you know intoxicating drug <laughs> issues Amigetic. yeah so um this is in her encounter with drugs and her drug dealers all these bad stuff what's she was then wait, raped yeah all right so what's your take on drug addicts as well you know let's talk about that how do you feel about drug addicts uh, well it's not a good thing as far as i'm from it's not a good thing but i, I it's not as i said it's not a good thing it's mm. not a good thing but i feel uh it can be, it can be reduced. Mm. Okay, how, how do you think that can be done? Uh, through your therapist, right. Okay, so I mean like, when, when I'm asking you about your take on drug dealers, what's your take on them? Do you think they are the problems? What do you yeah. mean? Uh, yes, yes, they are the problems. The drug dealers themselves. Yeah. Yes, they are the problems. No, not the drug dealers, the drug addict. Oh, well. As I said, it's to me, I, I don't really have much to say on that. But I, I But you know that addiction is a disease. And we should empathize and sympathize with every addict because it's beyond their control. Do you know that? Yes, I know that. I know it's a disease. I know. Yes. But, but what's okay? okay well, go ahead. You wanna, no, you want to say something? You want to say something. You say it's a disease, yes, but is it. Are they, isn't that they are, are they born with it? Do you think they are born with They're it? Born, no. Were you born with cancer? Where people born with cancer, they got cancer. And we empathize and sympathize with every cancer patient. So why are we not going to sympathize and empathize with every drug addict if it is categorized as a disease?